feeding of the 5,000. Great day for those who were there. Now, I'm not sure why they didn't get a memo about bringing a lunch, but how in the world would 5,000 people go to a gathering and have no plans for vittles? So it comes time for lunch, and the disciples go up and say, say, uh, Jesus, could you just, like, do that miracle thing and just poof, have some food? Be great. And Jesus says, well, you know, uh, why don't you go get some food and let's see how that works out. Jesus wanted them to be involved in the miracle. So as you may recall, the disciples went around and said, anybody got any food? Anybody got any fish? They get some loaves of bread and some fish, bring it back to Jesus, and just like that, Jesus did the miracle thing, enough food for everyone to eat, and somebody also had some doggy bags to share. But you guessed it. So what? Was this a one-off? Cheerio for those who were there, but what about us? Well, actually, the good news of the gospel is the feeding of the 5,000 is intended to be a miracle that's replicated here and now, that you and I are called to feed the hungry and make a miracle of having everyone be satiated. You see, my friends in Christ, when that is the case, the Holy Bible is not a history book. Rather, the Holy Bible is a roadmap. It's a recipe for life. The Holy Bible is, if you will, a template of what we can expect and work toward and hope for and realize. Take, for example, today's gospel when before Jesus makes his way to the cross, and for those of you who have been going all the time, we've been talking about the farewell discourse that Jesus says goodbye and goodbye and goodbye and goodbye. Well, this is the last goodbye, and he says before I say my last goodbye, I'm going to give you a gift, the greatest gift. I'm going to give you me, but invisible, because I know you're going to continue to need me, and by the way, I want to hang with you. <laughs> 